A person called John the Baptist preceded the coming of Jesus. Likewise, there will be a heralding of a people in the order of John the Baptist, in the order of Elijah, this time not a person but a people huh. who will prepare the way of the Lord's second coming. So if John the person preached repentance before the first coming of Jesus, quote unquote, John, a people, will preach repentance before the second coming of what? You are welcome to a great moment in destiny. God is about to speak directly to you. And the message coming right up is crafted by heaven, not just to challenge you, but to align your destiny. As you embrace divine instruction, expect that God's word is bringing about revival, healing, restoration, and transformation to your entire life. With faith in your heart and great expectation, join me and receive God's word through his choice vessel, Good Heart Obi Ekweme. Before you turn to 2 Chronicles 7 tonight, I have good news for you. We are in a season, and life is about times and seasons. Oh yeah. We are in a season where there is enablement and grace to be delivered from repetitive sins cyclical cyclical <laughs> habits seven year old habits ten year old habit I mean it's dodged your way it's dodged your track you've prayed you've fasted you've given you've lamented you've confessed to your pastor and your bishop it, it just seemed to stay there tell you what there is a season Oh boy. If only you take advantage of the season, it will be far more easier than you think. And similarly, in the area of such repetitive sins and habits, hear me real good. Likewise, there may be diseases you've seen round about, like a circle, every three months, every one year. It rears its ugly head. We're in a season where there's gosh, oh, shut up, by ya. Is it HIV? Is it cancer? Is it tuberculosis? Whatever. It's a season. Can we for 60 seconds take advantage of this pool of Bethesda and receive grace to come out clean, to come out healed, to come out whole? Let's take grace. Oh, yeah. Address that matter. Is it an ailment, a weakness, or what you think is a curse? Oh, no, 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 no. The expiry date, Kondaya, the expiry date is in this season. If only you believe God, no more sickness, no more delays, no more cycles of pain and sorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Second Chronicles 7, 14 and 15. We'll run along tonight. The Lord bless all of you for being in church tonight. For those who are online, God bless you also. Second Chronicles 7, 14 and 15. We'll read from the NLT, otherwise known as the New Living Translation. Let's read together boldly, courageously as a happy, happy family, NLT. One, two, three, go. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. My eyes will be open 
and my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. Hallelujah. For an assignment this beautiful night, Redigging the Wells of Revival, part number five, for a subtitle, True Repentance versus False Repentance. Our Father, thank you for blessing the reading of your word. I beseech you again to take a coal of fire from the altar of heaven and on the lips and the tongues of clear of this seven son of yours that tonight I will come to these your wonderful people on site, online with a thus said the Lord with vows always to give you praise and glory. In Jesus' wondrous name we pray. Somebody shout a believe in amen. amen. You may please be seated in God's wonderful presence. I don't know about you, but I have been having an amazing time in this month of September to remember we're revisiting the nerve and the focal mandate of this great ministry. I began to share with you on Sunday with a ministry with a name like Revival House of Glory International Church. <laughs> Uh, there must be a thing or two about revival we know and we're walking in with a global mandate such as horn of revival of ministry. There must be something about the ministry and the church that has to do greatly with revival. I want to encourage you please to go online, get the various messages preached so far. They are available on my YouTube, nicely edited. Um, my YouTube handle is Apostle Goodhart TV and they will bless you tremendously. Part number one, redigging the world's revival through prayer. Part number two, activating the given grace. Part number three, releasing the given grace. Part number four, true repentance, the foundation for genuine and lasting revival. And here we are, we are tonight on trying to look at the difference between true repentance and false repentance. Before I take on my task tonight, I just want to jar your thinking a little bit in case you've heard any person at all uh, try to despise or belittle the sound of revival or the teaching of revival because religious people have this idea that believers don't need to be revived. <laughs> and if you're a student of scripture, you're very far from the truth and from the reality. Because the word revive, in the first place, it's a compendium of two words, re and vive. The word re, you know, uh, is used in many words, return, rewind, uh, re, 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 you know, restore, you know, re. It talks about putting back something that was there before but was lost. Praise God, to restore, put back, to rewind, to go back, you know. Um, so, so, so to revive means something was vived. The word vive is the root word from vivacious. Something alive, something resourceful, something productive. It, it simply means you can only revive <laughs> something that had some measure of life once upon a time. Began to lose it or has lost it completely. Now you come into the very last book of the Bible, uh, this book of the Bible, Revelation, and the Lord post-resurrection uh, spoke to seven churches from Ephesus to Laodicea. And largely, five out of those seven churches, he placed a demand for them to repent. Praise God. To repent. Because repent or repentance is a very, very key ingredient, fundamental, foundational to revival. Huh. As a matter of fact, one way that you know that revival has hit a place is this. <laughs> there is a heightened awareness. There is a heightened conviction of sins that hitherto people lived with and were not convicted. And the truth is, my brother, my sister, because you are not convicted of sin does not make it righteousness. Oh, uh, boy, you got that. My son, you got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy got that. I said something. Somebody missed it. Let me say it again. 
because I'm in sin and I have no conviction does not make me just or righteous before the Lord. Praise God. Oh, Konaka. So it is miserable and frightening for a child of God to be in sin and lack the requisite pressure, conviction, not condemnation, conviction of the Holy Ghost. Listen, people say, no, 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 no. You're preaching condemnation. You're making me feel bad. Oh, no, wait a minute. You better feel bad. You better feel bad. You know, there is a difference between godly sorrow and what? Ungodly sorrow. So, godly sorrow is needful. It leads to repentance. <laughs> you need it. Godly sorrow leads to repentance. So, when you lack godly sorrow, you lack the opportunity, the privilege, and the benefit of repentance. Oh, Shanoko Tekana. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it is frightening for a child of God to live the way he wants to live and, and just feels all right. Because God will not bend his standards or change the rule because you don't feel convicted. Hey, I'm preaching myself happy. No, 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 no. He, he won't suddenly say, oh, 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 fornication is okay because you've done it seven times, you don't feel bad anymore. No, no, no. Fornication is fornication. Lying wouldn't suddenly become something uh, 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 acceptable because you, you lie like they say you like like a fish and you don't really feel anything. No, 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 no. Lying is lying. Are you here? Praise God. So revival, whether anybody lacks or not, is a necessary movement. It's important for both. Not really, not really for not for unbelievers. Lastly, for the church. Largely, the message of revival is for believers. The message for the unbelievers is the gospel to be born again. They have no basis for revival if they are dead in the spirit. And until the church sees that we are not where God designed us to be as the first century church in Acts 1 to 28 that we all need revival. Uh, listen, the church will have much noise but not impact. The church will have numbers but not much significant change in our society. Whilst the numbers are important, it's not just numbers. No, it's the influence and the impact. We're designed to be salt of the earth and the light of the world. The Bible says a city set on a hill cannot be hid, but unfortunately, the church is hid. Numbers all over the world, but yet, not substantial traction of impact. So what is the issue? The church needs to be revived. A sound like this needs to be introduced into the church to send spiritual shockwaves into people. To show them the reality of where we are vis-a-vis -vis where we ought to be. And when you see the gap between where you are, where you ought to be, guess what you do? You will repent. Are you still here? Please stay with me tonight. It will get a bit hotter. Ah. Revival is here again. Mm. The Bible declares in Hosea 6, 1 to 3, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten. He will bind us up. By the way, for those who are scholars in scripture, this is written in the permissive will of God. God doesn't bring sickness. He permits it because you broke the head. <laughs> he doesn't, yeah. So he so, says, so he that breaks the head, so much about. So in this case, really, it says the Lord tore. No, 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 no. They were torn because the head was broken. Praise the Lord. All right, so it's permissive. All right. After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up. 
Mm. And we shall live in his sight. Now, to, 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 to raise you up speaks of the glory of the Lord. So it means kulayata. The sound of revival must be noise to precede his coming glory. Before the glory of the Lord will land in the church, the church must be revived. Otherwise, the glory will bring casualty and destruction to the church. Here we are crying, bring the glory. Show us the glory. But God is saying, you're not ready yet. If I come, you'll die. <laughs> if I come, my glory will fry you. If I come, people will fall like a pack of cats on the stage. If I come, the usher will collapse. The man on the street will fall down in, the, in this uh, uh, parking lot. So he says, get ready because I'm coming. Praise God, somebody. So revival precedes the glory of the law. Beloved, I can't emphasize enough how important repentance repentance is to revival but also repentance is to the your well-being here on the earth but also repentance is important to your eternal well-being help me lord tonight let me start by re-emphasizing what i said on sunday that repentance is the first please write down it is the first and foundational move of anyone who will successfully return to God. Wow. So if you want to return to God, the first move, mm, the foundational move, is the move of repentance. If you must come back to God and you will gain access to God, the first in fact, ironically, track with me, repentance needs to take place before faith comes. Oh, yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to change your... Mess around with your theology a little bit. You think you lack faith. You're struggling to believe God. But really, if you look closely, it may be that you're struggling with faith because you haven't come to repentance repentance precedes faith track with me just write it down it will make sense in a while mm. we see that john the baptist koto yata was one who identified himself as the voice of one crying in the wilderness <laughs> prepare ye the way of the law uh, the sermon or the mandate or the message of John was primarily the message of repentance. Mark 1, 3 to 4. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Oh boy. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of what? Church of what? What did he preach? Thank you. He preached the baptism of repentance. For what? For the remission of sins. A person called John the Baptist preceded the coming of Jesus. Track with me. Likewise, there will be a heralding of a people in the order of John the Baptist, in the order of Elijah, this time not a person but a people huh, who will prepare the way of the Lord's second coming. <laughs> Are you here? John came in the spirit of Elijah. And what that ministry is to prepare hearts for the coming of Messiah. So if John, the person, preached repentance before the first coming of Jesus, 
quote unquote, John, a people will preach repentance because before the second coming of what? Jesus. Repentance is key and critical. Track with me tonight. It's beyond what you think. <laughs> All right. Not just that, Jesus himself preached repentance. Mm. Same chapter, Mark. 1 14 to 15. Mark 1 14 to 15. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. What did he say? Repent what? Repent ye and do what? And believe the gospel. You could overlook that to be a simple statement, but it's an order. Repent and what? Believe. So you may be struggling with the belief because you have not repented. Faith becomes easier to walk in when you have first encountered repentance. So, the answer to your faith problem could be repentance. Mm. Repent and believe. Mm. Today, many are trying to believe before repent. Jesus commissioned his disciples post-resurrection to preach again this same gospel of repentance. Let's look at Luke 24. It's a Bible study class. Luke 24, verses 46 to 48. Please write. Luke 24, 46 to 48. Please write. Refer back to these notes. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer. And to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem. And you are what? Witnesses of these things. So again, repentance and remission of sins. So we repent before we are saved. Alright? You are not saved, then you repent. No, sir. No, ma. You repent, and then sins are remitted. You are saved. And you are saved by faith. Or by grace, through faith. Not, not, uh, 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 not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. So, we are saved by grace, through faith. But before you encounter that faith, repentance is key. So repentance is the doorway to meet Jesus. Oh boy. Oh boy. Repent and believe. All right. Let's look at another scripture that Bob presses this point in Acts 2. Acts 2, 36 to 38. Please write. Acts 2. 36 to 38. We have many scriptures to look at tonight. That's why I asked the church to gather today so we can do a Bible study class. All right. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. How many people become pricked in their heart when they hear the gospel in the day and age we live in today? I, I've heard many a sermon, nothing pricked me. All I heard, seven steps to the best me, nine steps to wonder miracles, twelve steps to to wonderful home. 
But when the true gospel is preached, the Holy Ghost pricks your heart. Kondikataro. So our responsibility as preachers is to preach his word and he is committed to pricking hearts. So if your hearts are not pricked when you hear the gospel, there are two things missing. Number one, there's something wrong with your hearing. Number two, the gospel you're hearing is not prickable. That's my English. I want to drive it home. And there are many gospels that are psychology, philosophy, metaphysics, yeah, nothing, nothing gonna prick your heart, man. Nothing. You just be balancing in sin, and yet you're clapping church. Oh, sing, go, sing, go. Do you know how many who enter church on Sunday and come out on Monday in the brothel? <laughs> Do you know those who pray online prayers and the next minute, minute they lie cigarettes? That was the guy shouting, Show there, show there, show there, show there, for one hour. Show there, show there, show there, show there, show there, show there. But after show there, you just light cigarettes. Something, there's a disconnect. Yet we see it's Christianity. No, sir. When the message of Christ is preached, the Holy Ghost is committed to prick him. Prick him. You preach, he pricks. Hmm. Are you still here? I can see you're shifting your chair. It's okay. You're being pricked. That means you're still alive in your spirit. <laughs> it's good to be pricked. Mm -hmm. They were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It begins with repentance and then be baptized. Foundation, repent, believe, be saved. All right, let's look at Acts 17, 30 to 31. Acts 17, 30 to 31. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! Repentance is a gift. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a blessing. The Bible talks about the gift of repentance. Acts 17, 30 to 31. And the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commandeth all men. It's a commandment. For who? All men. No exception. Not gender sensitive. All men and women. All men everywhere to what? So repentance is a commandment. Because he hath appointed a day. Oh boy. Oh boy. In the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. A commandment to all men everywhere. No exception. To do what? Repent. 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 One more scripture, Acts 20, 20 to 21. We're pointing out that repentance is foundational, but it also precedes faith and salvation. Acts 20, 20 to 21. And how I kept back, Apostle Paul now, nothing that was profitable unto you, but I have shown you and have taught you publicly and from house to house testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. What is this now? Repentance what? Toward God and what? Faith toward who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. What came first? And then what? Repentance to what God is the foundation and faith to what our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Beloved, there is no alternative to found, sorry, alternative to any man who will come to God outside repentance. 
is the doorway. Repent and believe. Repent and be saved. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Now the question is, if this repentance is so fundamental, so foundational, so important, what is repentance? What is it? And how do I engage in true repentance? Well, I try to point out to you on Sunday, I remind you again, that repentance in my mind, not really in my mind, based on scripture actually, there are two sides of the coin. Right? One side of the coin has to do with your mindset. Your mindset. Your thinking. Your thoughts. Huh. So on one hand, what it means to repent is to be so confronted, as we shared moments ago, by the Holy Spirit, prayed by the Holy Ghost, and then in your mind, you make a decision. All right. You make a choice or a change of mind to turn 180 degrees. So I'm going this way. Bum, 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 bum. I'm confronted by truth, by light. All right. I'm pricked by the Holy Ghost. I can choose to rebel against the voice of conviction and bulldoze and go this way. That's what it means to grieve the Holy Spirit and to another higher degree to quench it or quench him. Praise God. But ideally, when you are convicted by the Holy Ghost, you ought to change your mind. Kondaya. What is it in the mind that I'm in the wrong direction? If I carried on this way, it will lead to some kind of disaster or destruction. So I change my mind. Kotopalata. This was what happened to the prodigal son, we call him that, in Luke 15 from verse 11. They're about, I think by 17, they're about, we read thus, and he came to himself. Kondaya, thank you, sir. And when he came to himself, he said, Koliata, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. Give me verse 18, please, all the way to 19. I, oh, sure, took up. Now he says, I will what? Rise. Wow. And go to my father. So step one, he was confronted. Where? In his mind. Brother, I pray that somebody under the sound of this preacher will come to yourself to see that you are better than that. There is glory ahead of you. Where you are is too small. There's too much at stake for you to remain in Lodeba. Come to yourself. But he went beyond just changing his mind. He said, I will arise. So the next part of repentance is to change your direction. That means an action that comes as a result of a change of mind or a change of decision. A year. I change my mind. I'm going into error. He says, I will arise and go back. Kondaya. Where? To my father. Why? I have sinned against heaven and before thee. He's a man who was convicted. Two things. His mind changed, but for your mind to change alone and your, your, your mind not to follow through to action is not full repentance. It may be remorse. There are those who are remorseful, but not repentant. In fact, many times, <laughs> you may think you're, you're repentant because you are caught in the very act. Yeah. You are caught in the very act. Whatever it is. And then you, you cry all that cry. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. But there is no change of mind and there's no change of action to say, I ain't going back to this bed anymore. It means you have left a room for you to find yourself there some days to come. Because you didn't engage in true repentance. You're only remorseful. There are husbands who slept with somebody, not their wife, and they went home to cry to their wives, but they were not repentant. They were only remorseful. They were caught in the react. 
Hmm. You can extrapolate this to any area of your life. The question is, at the point you said you were repentant, were you remorseful or you were genuinely repentant? God have mercy, my sister. And you see, religion is so dangerous. By the way, Christianity, as true as it is, is not a religion. No, sir. No, sir. Religion anywhere in the world is fig leaves. Fig leaves. Fig leaves were what Adam and Eve sought by their own intelligentsia to cover themselves. Call any religion in the world, they're fig leaves. They can't cover your sin. Only blood can cover your sin. So the religion of Christianity is as dangerous as the religion of Buddha. You know what? Let me tell you. Don't feel bad. Though. It gives you a false sense of peace. I wish I could go deeper. It gives you a false sense of peace. Underscore false. Because you're clapping. You pray chaplet, rosary. You give tithe. You give fat offering to your bishop, your pastor. You're a church worker. You wash lavatory. You sweep. You're parking cars. You pass to heaven. No. That's a false peace. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Works can never save a man. And religion proceeds, you can walk enough to gain the attention of, my, of God. It's not possible. By strength shall no man prevail. <laughs> religion is dangerous. You know what? Pastor Kenny, it's oftentimes easier for a stuck unbeliever to genuinely repent than a religious Christian. Not born again, religious Christian. Underscore, please. Born in church. I was, uh, I was born into a very, very good Anglican family. My grandfather was a cat kiss. I say humorously, don't be angry. Born, baptized, confirmed, confused. Until I met Christ when I got born again many years after that. I said, man, so that religion was just making me feel okay. I'm all right. If I died before I met Christ, I'm not to tear hello. Yet I was baptized, confirmed, taking communion. You're a communicant. This is my brother, our saviors. You're a communicant. You're very proud about your, your, your religion. Yeah, I'm a communicant. I'm a full Catholic. I'm a full Anglican. No, 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 no. We don't be that way. No, bro, get born again or go to hell. Forget this nonsense. Religion gives a false sense of safety and peace. Very false. But the man who is smoking and drinking knows he's on his way to hell. So if he hears the true gospel, he will repent. But the guy who has been in church for so long says, ah, no, I don't smoke, I don't drink. Is that right? That's why you can go to heaven. Beyond that. Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. So, are you remorseful or you're repentant? We'll get there. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's to change your mind and then to follow up with action that agrees with the change of mind. All right. Why do we need to repent? Isaiah 5, 3, verse 6. It's a Bible study. Why do we need to repent? Isaiah 53, verse number 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. How many? Thank you, sir. All we includes the good old pastor. All we like sheep have gone astray. This is the way of man outside Christ. Anybody who doesn't know Christ, call it any religion, call it whatever packaging. Gone away. Astray. We have turned how many? Oh, come on, people of God. Who? Everyone has turned to his what? His own way. 
And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us. What mercy? God laid on Jesus all of our iniquities put together so we have a way of escape by the blood of Jesus. Hmm. We've all sinned and gone astray. We've gone in our own ways. You know, the great sin of man is not all the things you'd call sins, lying, cheating, uh, jealousy, malice, envy, strife, uh, lust, name it all. Those are only children. <laughs> now, now sin bond them. Mm, they are symptoms of sin. You're trying to capture the symptoms. No, there's a root. The root is that you and I have a tendency to go our own way. Even after we came to Christ. Tell me. He'll tell you, leave your job or leave the church where you are or leave whatever it is. But the way of man says, no, I'm used to it. I'm familiar. I can't live here. It's the way of man. <laughs> That's a real challenge. Man wants to be his own lord. He may say, because he's your lord, but you want to be your own lord. That's why it is easier to embrace Christ as your savior than to embrace him as your lord. Are you here? Let your mind be changing. So there are many born again Christians, but they're not converted. No, they need conversion. <laughs> Without conversion, you don't have you, don't, you lack power. Without conversion, you don't resemble Christ. He said, Samuel Peter, you're good tested. I have prayed for you. You know what it means for Christ to pray for you? I have prayed for you. But the prayer of Christ didn't stop the temptation. He said, I have prayed for you. You may test it. But you know what? You bounce back. Tell anybody I'm bouncing back. Oh, come on, that's a joy. I am bouncing back. Did Peter bounce back? He bounced back. He bounced back from a low place of falling to become the head of the church. Somebody's making a comeback. I don't know what you've been through so far, but by the mercy of the Lord, may that be a set up for you to make a comeback. Set up to make a comeback. Amen. You will bounce back. You will bounce back. You will bounce back stronger. Amen. They call you a harlot. You will bounce back. Amen. Ask Rahab. She found her way in the lineage of Messiah. Bounce back. <laughs> he chose the weak things to confound the strong. That's my master. He chose the seemingly foolish to confound the so-called wise. You will bounce back. If only you are sincere to repent, not remorseful, not packaging, covering, 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 covering. Sin will always be sin, no matter the amount of perfume you spray on it. Write it down. It stinks. It stinks. Fine girls, perfume, but nyama nyama under. Jati jati. Fine bobo. Looking cool, packaging. So with a swagger. He came out with a Rolls Royce, S class. He's smelling. Not a perfume. You don't cover sin, you deal with it with the blood. You confront to conquer. I, I want you, by the mercy of the Lord, to begin to see some things that you've been wrestling with and determine I am going to be ruthless. <laughs> by the mercy of God ruthless to confront them if need be engage fasting and prayer say this thing can't take me away from my destiny this habit this habit married but somehow you're lured to some sites your wife thinks you're doing business or not like you're, 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 you're doing your own business of soul. Some sites. You know those kind of sites? David opened himself to pornography once. 
The rest was history. You know what I'm saying? When King Saul to go to battle, he was resting. And then he opened his window in the evening. He saw a beautiful, wonderful girl, Bathsheba. Well located, well positioned. At the right time, waiting for you. That's the devil. One glance. The husband died. It raised war in his lineage. Till today, Israel is still at war. Countless things happen on account of just one glance. One website you open and you open and open again. You felt you were powerful. You speak in tongues. No, sir. No, sir. Like Job. Make a covenant with your eyes. You won't behold iniquity. You're not that powerful. No, no. The allurement of sin is cruel. It draws you. You resist it. You run from it. You persist. Flee, sir. Okay? That's the Bible. Flee. Don't say I'm a bishop. I'm an apostle. No. Don't be like that. He's my spiritual daughter. So we can be at 12 minutes. No. No such spiritual daughter. No. The oil is too expensive. No. What daughter? I will kill you. I will kill you and bury you. And raise you up to heaven. Eh? You come and sit in front and you open your leg. I will kill you. By the grace of God. You are trying to catch him. I will slap you. Or you come to my office for cutting, you're half naked, I will send you out. I'll give you a rapper to cover your, your chest. It's, it's, this thing is, it's, it's not for my wife, oh. it's for my destiny. I fear God. My wife is secondary. I will stand before God one day. Uh, that's what I fear more. Then my wife is secondary. I want to love her and maintain our, our vow. But God, I'm back. you the oil in your life. I mean, you know how what it took to get where you are today? The one sitting, sitting, 17 year old girl that you can give birth to or you, you give birth to somewhere. You know, you can give, it's trying to mess up your life and destiny. Uh, where is the power? Is it hair? Is it leg? Is it toe? Is it, uh, try my toe. Try my leg. Uh, try, uh, delay, delay. Uh, try, try, try. Okay, is it uh, No, uh, it's lock. Then finally, they, you're shaved. Uh, we'll cry for mercy. Mercy. The last time I read my Bible, flee from youthful lust. They are lost that are acquainted with youth. Is there your body? As a youth, your body they charge. You can discharge anyhow. You can on fire. <laughs> doki doki. Man, okay. Fire. Okay. So I have to guard the fire. So don't use the fire for wrong purpose. It's for saving not for killing. <laughs> so it's a, it's a new kind of grace. God forbid. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost for two minutes. Can we receive grace to finish well in this journey of life? Abara Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Somebody plead the blood over your mind, over your eyes, over your ears. Are there any areas of your life you need to repent? Cry out for mercy. It's not by power. It's not by might. We don't stand by our strength though. It's by grace, by grace, by grace. And grace is found by prayer. Come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. Find grace and help in the time of need. Oh, nobody's too powerful. No, I can't fall. No, it's God that's kept you. God will keep you. Ask for grace. I surrender all. Oh, surrender. Shakata. Cry out to your God today. One minute. Ask for mercy. Leave us. Ask Him to help you. Ask Him to forgive you. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. To repentance. I surrender. Come on, logic. Let's pray. Mercy upon us, Lord. We pray on Sunday, we pray again. Mercy upon this church.
Every way we've turned away from you, Lord, tonight. Mm. Wow. By mercy and grace, <laughs> we return back. Ah, we change our minds and we make a 180 degree turn from our own ways to your own way, from our own thoughts to your own thought. Father, we thank you for deliverance. Thank you for healing of addictions. Things that the devil lied to your children, they will have to manage and live with for their lives. But today you're seeing, they're seeing the possibility of liberty and freedom. There's a chain over somebody's neck that literally just snapped now. A chain, fetter, snapped now. You are going to walk out of this hall and realize your taste bud has changed. Somehow, the desire to go back there is gone. It's a miracle. It's supernatural. That desire dried up supernaturally. That's deliverance. Wow. Leave those hands where you are for 30 seconds. Say, Lord, I thank you. I yield myself. No longer will I struggle with the Holy Ghost. Wow. That's it. That's it. Breathe in and out. Receive strength. Hands up as you worship him. Yes. Yes. Wow. The Holy Ghost is washing. He's cleansing right now. I tell you, there's healing all over here. Oh boy. Cracks have been mended. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That abuse at 7 and 10 and 12 that led you to that lifestyle. Oh, yes, the Lord is going to your roots. Yes, healing. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, mass deliverance right now. Believe him, believe him, believe him, believe him, believe him, believe him. No, we'll not be like the dog that returns to our vomit anymore. No, sir, no, sir. From today, forward ever, back whatever. From today, up whatever, down whatever. By the blood of Jesus, by your mercy, by your grace. Nothing is too hard for this God to do. Believe him. He died for all sins. Believe him. Believe him. Believe him. The devil lied that it was impossible to be free. Believe God. Believe God's report. Refuse the report of the enemy. I know it's been a long journey of being bound, but I tell you, God brought you here tonight to liberate you, to break the hold over your neck, to break the fetter around your le legs, around your hand. Chains broken, fetters cut asunder by the anointed. Wow, what a deliverance. <laughs> wow, Jesus is winning everywhere. Jesus is winning in logic. He's winning everywhere. The deliverer is winning in this house. Hallelujah. Wow. Father, we thank you. Give me five minutes to drop one more thought. And that's how far we can go tonight. Repentance. We haven't even talked the, 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 the call of the matter, what is true and false, but that's fine. I wanted to take my time by God's grace. Um, but three things, or three things I mentioned in terms of identifying what sin is. We saw primarily sin is the departure of men from the way of God. Number two, there is what is called the sin of of commission that means to break the law to break 
God's counsel. Now, 1 John 3, 4, write down. 1 John 3, 4, we're dealing with the sin of commission. That's to commit sin. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. What is sin? The transgression of the law. So to violate the word of God or his commandment, obviously is sin. That's pretty much easy to understand. But there's another dimension of sin we don't quite usually take into account. But it's still sin. This time it's not commission, it's the sin of omission. Say with me, omission. All right. Write down James 4, 17. Hmm. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is what? Sin. So this case now is that I know to do good, but I don't do it. So it's not what I did wrong, it's what I didn't do right. Praise the Lord. Is that okay? So commission and omission. So third aspect, one highlight, and then we'll pray. Wow. If you get this one, it will change how you view what repentance is. Now, Romans 3.23, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for help. Right. It says, for all, how many? All. That's right. For all have sinned and come what? Short of what? The glory of God. Now, the glory of God is not just a thing. When the glory, the glory came in the service. But the glory of God is also a person. Jesus is the epitome of the glory of God. John 1.14 says, And the word was made flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld what? His glory, the glory as of what? The only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Wow. So Jesus is the embodiment and the epitome of the glory of the Lord. Now track with me. Huh. If to fall short of the glory of God is sin and Jesus is the glory of God and Jesus is our perfect example, right? He is the example son he came to show us the Father, but He came to show us what it means to live like the Son. <laughs> wow. The Bible says, He called us to conform, please listen, to conform to what? To what? To the image of who? Of Jesus. Wow. So, you're not just born again to break through, to be rich, to be a doctor, to be a banker. We are primarily born again to engage in a process ongoing of what? Conforming to who? Wow. Romans 8, 29. Write it down. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be what? Conformed to the image of his son that he might be firstborn among many brethren. So, if I got born again here, and the image I'm to conform to is right here in my prayer life, my Bible study, in my consecration, in how I use my words, how I, 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 I serve as a husband, serve as a father, I serve as a pastor. I am here and Christ is here. When I see, track with me, when I track or see a gap between me, where I am now, and Christ, who is here as the exemplary pastor, as the ideal husband, as the ideal father. So, between there and here, there is what? A gap. Huh? You see that now? All right. So, what I need to do 
to mitigate or to close that gap, listen, is to repent. Hiya. Ah, may the Lord give us understanding. That's why repentance is not only the foundation to meet him, but it's necessary to continue to engage in true repentance from now till when you see Christ eyeball to eyeball. Hey! Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I wish the Lord would give you understanding. But certainly we must go deeper on this. You know why? If we capture this, we will be truthfully, genuinely in a repentance mode all the time. Oh boy. That's how you close the gap to holiness and purity. You inch to glory. This is, this is it. This is it. This is it. You're not repenting because you're remorseful. No, 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 no. It's what is expected to bridge the gap because you fall short of the image of the glory of Christ. Ha, yeah, yeah. Can you buy your hearts? Say, Lord, give me understanding for one minute. Wow. Thank you, Lord. In that position, if you're here, you're not born again, or truthfully, there are any areas of sins you're struggling with, can you? Pray along with me sincerely. Or perhaps, let me ask all of us to connect our faith to pray tonight. Wow. Repeat these words sincerely. Heavenly Father, church, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, here I am, just as I am, crying for mercy. Lord Jesus, in every way, I have fallen short of your glory. Please forgive me. Cleanse me of all sins, of all unrighteousness. Deliver me from every area. He that to today I was bound. By the blood, I know I'm liberated. As I step out of this holy sanctuary, I step into freedom, liberty. I decree and declare Jesus Christ alone is my Savior and my Lord. I am born again. I am blood washed. I am blood bought child of the living God. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. It's a good place to clap and give the Lord praise. If you're free, can you celebrate liberty? Oh, come on, church. You don't sound free enough. Let's celebrate. Let's give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Father, accept our praise tonight. In Jesus' name. You have just experienced the preaching and teaching ministry of Good Heart Obi Ekweme. Lead Pastor of Revival House of Glory International Church, Rajik, and the Apostolic Leader of the Horn of Revival Ministry, HORM, a global outreach ministry mandated to carry the torch of revival across cities and nations. If you would like to ask a question, share your prayer request or testimony, or get more messages or books from Goodheart, please call or text 805 223 4444 or email info at rogic.org. Also, download the Horn of Revival Ministry app on Google Play or Apple Store to connect with a variety of free quality resources, including Rogic Radio and our refreshing daily devotions to take you higher in life. Keep hearing the Word of God, it will produce intimacy with His Spirit for uncommon encounters on the earth.